Are you challenged to trust the answer of your chatbot when you chat with your data? Well, maybe you need to add trustworthiness score to the answer of your chatbot. And here is how you can simply do so. Then, let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank All you. right, let's get into what is trustworthiness score and how we can add it to our chatbot or RAG applications when you chat with your data. Well, what's the challenge we are going to tackle with? So let's say you are, you are a user and you want to ask some questions about documents about, let's say, NVIDIA or your company or your documents. And obviously, as you know, in RAG, when you have that question on the left side, you should go to your chunk of data that you have indexed to bring relevant documents to the prompt at stage number two to answer the question. As you can see, chunk one is relevant to the question that we asked about the revenue of NVIDIA, but chunk number two is maybe not that relevant. And it happens in your retrieval system, you might bring even not too relevant information to the prompt. So when you ask the question, or sorry, answer the question, maybe the response is good or not good at all and you might not sure which one you need to trust then we're wishing that i wish i could have a score to tell me how much i can trust to this answer let's say out of zero to one 93 percent that means i can trust the trustworthiness is high compared to this one so that can be a good peace of mind up to a level certain level to make us confident that how we can trust and trust uh, worthiness of this answer based on the score we're receiving so I'm going to quickly talk about what is trustworthiness, which is developed by CleanLab, and what's the concept, how it calculates this score, and how you can quickly implement that using here Llama Index in a quick Iraq application. So before jumping into the demo example, here I'm in the CleanLab Studio documents, and let's see how we understand trustworthiness score and how we can quantify this as a number to show when we get an answer from the chatbot, OK? So there are two different aspects of how we calculate uncertainty that is obviously correlated with trustworthiness. So the first one is knowing unknowns. So this is a type of uncertain uncertainty that the model is aware due to challenging requests. So the model knows that it's uncertain because the challenge, the request is vague or it's complete. That's one type of uncertainty. The second type is when you don't know what you don't know. So the model doesn't know anything because it's not being teach or trained on a similar request or similar data. So if the prompt is very different and to what LLM has been trained for, this is another type of uncertainty. And obviously these two will affect the answer and affect our trust. So the question is, how can I quantify those metrics? This is actually how trust forceness score by CleanLab has quantified the metric. They are using mainly three resources. First one is self-restriction, which is simply just asking LLM that, hey, can you rate your answer, how confident you are? That's one way, and it does. Second way is probabilistic prediction. So within this probabilistic prediction, they consider per token probability, because as you know, these models or LLMs, they just predict the next token, and there's a probability value associated that how probable the next token is, and there's a metric on that. So they use it for this type of uh, quantification of uncertainty and the second third one and the last one is observed consistency which is when you ask these models to to answer a question they can actually generate multiple responses and the question is how consistent cons consistent those answers are and and also how contradictory they are. If I generate two responses for the same question by LLM and both of them are extremely different, that means it's uncertain about it. So with having these three calculated in place, now Cloud Clean Lab trustworthiness score can give us good hints back that how we can trust or not to the answer that we're receiving. Okay, so Here's a quick implementation of that with Llama Index and uh, in-memory vector database. But again, whatever I showcase here, it doesn't mean you have to go through this. You can have your own query engine, your own embedding model, your own vector database. This is just a concept. 
Okay, so I will add all the codes here to the Discord channel and you can click on the Discord channel in the video description below. Go to the channel, there's a reference section. Click on the reference section, you will see the, the link to all these codes. So what I'm doing, I'm just downloading NVIDIA financial results for FY 2024. Ignore that, you can certainly use your own data, but I'm gonna chat with financial data of NVIDIA. So after downloading that, you need to install a couple of packages. Obviously, CleanLab is the one that developed trustworthiness, so you need that there. Again, I'm using Llama Index to just implement my rank. That doesn't mean you have to use Llama Index. And for embedding model, I'm just importing some hugging face models. So I've installed that. Everything was in place because I just ran it twice. And then here, how you can connect to CleanLab Studio to call trustworthiness score. Well, there is a key you have to put here. And how you can do that, you should go to app.cleanlab.ai. Register there, it will give you a free API key. You paste it here. I delete that before recording the video. So you paste it here, and now you have initiated connection to CleanLab Studio. By the way, you can have any LLM model that you want to have in your rack. Here, for example, if you want to use GPT-4, you should go to studio.tlm, trust for since model, to add GPT-4 as your, for example, query, uh, sorry, um, LLM that responds to the questions. Or if you don't want to add anything, just keep it empty as is. Now, here for the rack section, this is just a typical Llama index rack implementation, so I'm not going to go through that. I assume you're already familiar with what is rack. It's just technically adding some parameters on maximum context window, the number of output, what's going to be the model name, and adding that to the decorators created here under this class for the wrapper of custom LLM. And I get the response back as a JSON format to showcase that in my rack application. So this is pretty typical with Llama index implementation. And then with creating a wrapper, for trustworthiness using the settings we define on the top. I need to also make sure I know what's the embedding model to embed my questions and retrieve the embeddings out of what I have chunked. And here for the vector DB, I think it's using just in memory vector database. So we can certainly have yours, but this is just an example here. And again, uh, this trustworthiness model is agnostic to index and the query engine used for rack. So don't think about whatever I use here must to be in place. And for displaying that, here's a simple function to make the display of the answer is a little bit nicer to have the response and the score printed like this. And there you go, I'm ready. So I'm just saying that what was NVIDIA's total revenue in the first quarter of fiscal 2024? Here's the answer with a good trustworthiness score, almost close to 100%. So these are easy questions. I'm saying that how we can trust this, easy question, easy answer, so the trust score is high. The same thing for the next question, comparing FY. Uh, qu uh, quarter for FY23 to qu quarter one FY24. Perfect, 96%. What about this one? What significant transitions did James Hong in VLCO comment on? It's telling that it couldn't find it, but it's confident it couldn't find it. So again, the trust is also high, so we can trust that it couldn't find, maybe it wasn't there. But now going towards a little bit uh, more complex questions or having questions that there is no available context about them in our data. As you can see, it's answering to all of that. Uh, the given information doesn't provide anything about the questions that you ask, similarly to here. So the scores are lower, but still they are acceptable because we can trust on the answer that is saying that the information doesn't exist, okay? And even if you make it more challenging, like with harder questions, you can see that the score is dropped because of those probabilities on backing getting calculated for the token or inconsistency of the multiple responses. So obviously we could see the effect or effect of the answer trustworthiness with this score here when we change questions to challenging one or the one that they don't have any data to get the answer back. And interestingly at the end, what trustworthiness or Cloud Lab Clean Lab team did, there's a concept called OpenAI GPT for log probs. So technically you can get the probability of all these token predictions from GPT-4 as well. And you might say that, okay, MG, I can use that for as an indicator of trustworthiness. Then why should I go with clean lab trustworthiness score? Well, this one, it just used the probability of prediction. That's it. But as you remember, trustworthiness score, you use multiple methods for quantifying that metric. That's why they said, you know what, let's do a comparison. So what they did, they answered and asked some questions, if you see this table here, that both GPT-4 response, and their response was false. So they, the chatbot made the wrong answer. 
But using GPT for average token probability, it was 99%. So you as a user might say that, oh, I'm going to trust that answer because 99% it is like the probability was too high. But you're wrong because the answer was false. But their trustworthiness score showed 55. That's a very low score. So you would question that. Do I need to trust that answer? Maybe it is false. And you're right. It was false answer. So again, what they did, it's pretty simple. They just added, they went beyond just considering this token probability and added other factors that I showed you to create a score. I don't think you necessarily need to go to Queen Lab and do that. If you know the context, you can maybe implement your own wrapper and implement your own trustworthiness score. So my purpose of this video was giving you some heads up that, hey, using these tricks here and these definitions, you can define a trustworthiness score. Again, that doesn't fully resolve reliability to these LLMs and the responses, but a good hint to have that and making sure you're doing your best to put your card raise. And I hope you found the context useful. Thank you so much. If you liked the video, make sure you click on the like button and always I appreciate your comments down below. Thank you all. Be brave. Death will come to you just once. Dream big, my friends, believe in yourself and take action. Till the next video, take care.